I'm going to remind him is um, William. Okay, today's video is called "What Does the Bible Say About Seasons?" Now I want to. Now I want to. Now I want to talk about. First of all, I want to talk about. Well. Now, what do I believe about seasons? Why do they prove the Bible? Right? Well, is now is the word season mentioned in the Bible? Well, yes, the word season is mentioned in the Bible. The word season is mentioned um, fifty-five times in the Bible. Um, Now, what about now? See, the word so uh, yeah, the word season is mentioned in the Bible, but what are the four seasons? Well, well, first of all, you have to know what is the first season. Well, which one is first? Well, that's a good question. Well, I'll tell you what the first season is. It's winter. Okay, now how do I know it's winter? Because, well, the first season in the northern hemisphere is winter. Okay, it's not spring, because spring is not until March. So the first season in the northern hemisphere is winter. The first season in the southern hemisphere is summer. Okay, and then once you get to the and once you get to March, then you get to the second season in the Northern Hemisphere, spring. And then the Southern Hemisphere gets autumn or fall. Okay? Another word for spring would be vernal. Right? Vernal. Autumn would be omnino. Okay? And then on June 20th, we get summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Well, the summer here gets winter. Okay, and in September, the northern hemisphere gets um gets autumn, or you can also call it fall. And the summer here gets spring, you know, or you can also call it vernal. And then that's it. And we're back to winter. And the northern hemisphere in summer again. So. Because it's a whole big cycle. That's why the seasons is a cycle. Now I want to show you something. Okay, during the summer. Okay, during the winter time. When is when, do you know when? Okay, when is winter in the northern hemisphere? The sun is closer. Okay, sorry. The we're okay during okay we're closer to the sun. When it's winter, when it's winter. Well, it is well. First of all, that's because the our axis to the north pole is pointing away from us. And that's why that's why it's, that's why it's colder, even though it's so. That's why it's that's when we get winter, even though our winter is closer to the sun. And it, and it's farther away in the summertime, and and our and our summer is farther away from the sun. Well, that's in the northern hemisphere. What about the southern hemisphere? Because the southern hemisphere gets summer in December, and then and then um. And then winter in June. It means that the southern hemisphere gets a hotter summer and a colder winter. Because, because we're closer to the sun in December 
and we're farther and the okay so we're most because we're closer to the sun in January on January 3rd and we're far away from the sun on July 3rd okay this is what we call a elliptical orbit of our earth okay because on January 3rd when it's winter in, the, in our northern hemisphere and then and then and then and then the southern hemisphere gets summer well the southern hemisphere is getting a hotter summer and also the sun okay also the the sorry this and also the and also the southern hemisphere also it's also getting a colder winter because because we're far because when we're far away from the sun and we're getting when we're getting summer. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's really South America, Africa, and Australia. Well, it's really the southern part of South America, the southern part of Africa, and also and also Australia. It has to deal with the with the hotter summer and the colder winter. You know. And now why you know now I want to show you something what the evolutionists believed about. Because I'm not gonna believe this. Okay, so here's Earth's orbit today. So spring here in the northern hemisphere, fall in the southern hemisphere, and then um, okay, and then and then okay, so let's say it's winter in the northern hemisphere, which is right here, and then and then summer in the southern hemisphere right here, and then spring. In the in the in the northern hemisphere, and then fall in the southern hemisphere right here, and then summer in the northern hemisphere, and then um, and then winter in the southern hemisphere right here, and then fall again in the in the northern hemisphere, and then uh, and then fall okay sorry, and then in spring over here in the southern hemisphere. Now they think it changes every ten thousand years. But the problem is, is that that but the problem is the earth is young. Okay, sorry. The earth, but these are but do you know why they believe that this um do you believe the reason why they put these seasons? So they so these are why? So these why the southern. Do you know why the southern hemisphere gets gets um? A, a hotter winter and a colder summer, because we're closer to the sun in January than we are in July. And now, they think now the evolutionists believe that it changes every ten thousand years. But the problem is, is that. Is um, that um, and, and now at least when they believe that because that believe because they believe that the Earth is billions of years old. That's why. Now, I believe that the Earth is about sixty three hundred years old, but like, like the Bible says. So, does these seasons really change in ten thousand years? I don't think so. And, and I only don't know. Really, I only don't know if this season. I only only don't see. I only don't know if um, if of of my thinking of the seasons of the of the of um
I might, I don't know. I don't think it changes at all. I don't know, maybe 1,000 years? I don't know that for sure. But I don't believe it changes every 10,000 years. I believe that's wrong. I know these when they believe in that because they believe that the Earth is billions of years old. Which I believe is false because I believe the Bible. I believe that the Earth is about 6,300 years old. So does the seasons of these change? Look at this. Summer. Because... Because in the summer, we're farther away from the sun. That's in the northern hemisphere. But in the southern hemisphere, where it's winter, and they get a colder winter. And then in the, and then the, and then on the on and on and then we get, and then southern hemisphere has a hotter summer. As well, and they think it's going to be, ch and then they think it's going, to, and then they, and they, and they think it's going to change every ten thousand years. Because I know, I know, I know that I know. Here's why they believe in because they believe that the Earth was is billions of years old. Yeah, I don't know why they believe in that. This is false anyway, because if the Earth, because because the Bible teaches that the Earth is about sixty three hundred years old. You know, 6,300 years old. So this is false. Okay? And we need to go what the Bible says. Anyway, I only don't know if the seasons, if the seasons, okay. If this does change, I don't know. Maybe 1,000 years? I don't know. That's just my guess. Or it doesn't change at all. I don't know. But I know it's not 10,000 years. Because because the Earth is not billions of years old. It's only sixty three hundred years old. I just yeah, the Earth is not yeah the Earth is sixty three hundred years old, not not billions of years old. Now I want to show you some King James Bible. Now I want to show you an article that says about ten Greek Bible verses about time and seasons. So why do I believe that seasons prove the Bible and not evolution? Well, we have to go. Well, I'll show you in the Bible, and I know I'll show you where the word seasons are mentioned in the Bible. Okay, it says right here about the Bible about season right here. I love the change in the seasons that were enjoyed in the Midwest, USA. There's a sickening four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, and autumn. You also call autumn fall, right? Yes. We also call it spring fernal, okay? We don't see our four seasons down here in the Southwest. We definitely have summer, winter, and autumn in some years. And I've enjoyed a little bit of spring. One of my favorite things back in the, to watch the smell change in the colors and the free leaves they fall into the ground, announcing the the come to come winter. There was something about the sound of those leaves crunching under your feet. Uh, under your feet is enjoying the autumn outdoors and the Creator God. They give us a time and seasons, and they, and we can see the following the great KGV Bible verses. Genesis chapter 1, verses 14 18. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament, 
and of the hand divine the day from the night, and then we. Okay, is this nothing to change? Is this just something to sound that we use the crunching of crunching your feet as you enjoy the autumn outdoors? It is our creator God that gave us a time and seasons. Let me see the phone in our great Bible verses. Yeah, it's God that gave us our time and seasons, not evolution. Okay, it's God, not evolution. Okay, guys, okay, what's wrong with you guys? It's the Bible. You see, where is it right here? Jesus 114 verse 18. And God said there'd be lights in the firmament, and heaven to divine the day and the night. And that'd be signed for, for seasons and days and years. And that'd be leave for the lights in the firmament of heaven to give a light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights. The great light to rule the day, which is the sun. The lesser light to rule the night, which is the moon, by the way. And he made the stars also. And, and the set, and God set them in the firmament, and in, in the heaven that call, and to give light upon the earth. And, 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 and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divine the light from the darkness, and God, and God saw that it was good. This is Genesis chapter 1, and, absolute, and in, in the absolute first instance and time and seasons. God spoke it and it happened. This is the how the day and night may as well how God declared the lights, sun, moons, and stars. He used to become he had to come and measure the seasons. And the greater light the sun would rule the day, the lesser light, the moon, and the stars would rule the night. And he and it said it happened from the there one out we we have relayed his perfect plan. So King J V Bible verses time and seasons. Okay, eight. No, Genesis twenty-two. While the earth remained, its seed time and harvest, cool and heat, summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. Well, this is a, this is now this verse is talking about. Now this is a verse. Now this verse is proof that why climate change is false. Okay, um, because. We're not because it's not man who is not making the planet hotter, it's God. Okay. Well Okay, because God controls the weather. Okay? There's no such thing as Mother Nature because because God controls the weather. Okay? And after the great thud and the first thing Noah and his family after leaving the ark and built an altar uh, to offer a thanksgiving sacrifice to the Lord for all he had done to protect he and his family from raging waters and destroyed the earth, he set up an offering. And every clean and foul, the Lord smelled the, the sweet sacrifice. The Lord has promised never to destroy the earth in such a way again. But he did verse 20 and 21. He declared. At the time season to remain so long as the earth remained. Psalm chapter 1, verse 13. He shall be like a tree planted from the rivers and the water, and the fruit is like a season. The leaf also shall not wither whatsoever he shall do it prosper. Okay, Psalm chapter 1. This is a picture of the, of the man that walks in the Lord. He is careful and he just has to spend time with. He stays away from those are of the full of condemned. And disrespect, scornful. Instead, he spends time in his word and pr pr purpose is to live a life that is that that is pleasing to the Lord. The psalmist says that this just righteous man is a it's a fruitful tree. And there's probably water daily in the word. Therefore, produces good fruit in the proper time season. And God blesses them with with. Prosperous life, your time on the earth matters. Okay, Psalm 104, verse 19. 
He pointed the moon in four seasons, and the sun knoweth is going down. The psalmist remind you of our great God. Earlier in our chapter, the psalmist says, and they who are the foundations of the earth, but they are be removed forever. So number 44, verse 4, the glory of the painted, the masterpiece, and it is this psalm, and take some time to read Psalm number 4, and then praise our Lord of creation. Okay, Echoes the last chapter 3, verse 11. He had made everything beautiful in his time. He had set in the world in their hearts, so that no man can find the work that God had made it from the beginning to the end. Okay, Echoes the last chapter 3. Perhaps the most popular chapter in the Bible where it that God and a planet created the earth and his inhabitants. They have considered that he had everything. Beautiful in his time, this means that the time is in his hands and and to fully understand the beginning to the end is not something that you shouldn't spend too much time on. Trust that he knows the right time to give us a glimpse of his plans for you to hold to it. Now let's go. Let's go. Now Isaiah, I stated Isaiah chapter fifty-five verses ten to eleven. For the rain, for the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and the returneth not thither, but the watereth the earth, and maketh it for make bring forth and bud, and we may give seed to a sower and the bread to the eater. So shall be the, my word that be that goeth forth out of my, of my mouth. It shall not return unto the void. But it shall accomplish that which I please, and shall prosper in the thing whereon to assent it. I love how the great Isaiah prepares the rain with word. Water comes down from heaven and does what God intended and nourishes the seeds into flowers, trees, fruit, and vegetables. It does not return to heaven. Instead, the plants use it up. God's word should be the same. It should be taken to the heart, nourished your soul. So you may grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, which is what the Lord pleases. The foundation of the biblical parody. We see that the of the of the parents and permanently the, the father given responsibility to raise children in such a way. The two of these are six four nine and of these are six four. I was new for twenty one. Have you considered this? Daniel chapter two for twenty one. He changed the times and seasons, and he removeth kings and set up, and he set up kings and then wisdom to unto the wise knowledge of them that know understanding. Daniel the prophet, doing the sign of the evil king Nebuchadnezzar, he brought of the king's dream that only that was only after the king of upon his magicians, astrologers, and sorcerers would not figure out the meaning of the dream. Daniel two verse two to thirteen. The king was also furious that he dreamed. He determined in order to wise men. And Babylon destroyed, including Daniel, revealed, meaning dream to Daniel. And Daniel gave a praise to him, and his praise, like Galatian, only that his Lord is in control, all the things, and uh, including the time and the seasons, prosper. Leadership, wisdom, knowledge, understanding when Daniel was finished, interpreting the dream that believed that was, that Daniel worshipped the only true God that was the revealer of secrets, Daniel chapter 2, verse 47. To go war with Daniel and his friends to go, Sedridge. Okay, message. Okay, 
and Abednego, the survivors, the fiery furnace, and many good and great gifts, the leadership over the province of Babylon. The entrance to verse 48 and 49. Okay, Acts 1 for 7. He said unto him, It's not for you, you know, it's not time it's not time for you to know the, the times and or the seasons which the Father had put it in his own power. Okay, chapter one in the Acts of the Apostles is one of reminder that we don't need to know everything indeed, that sometimes we misinterpret things, but what I mean is that chapter of the Acts, the second happened after the section of Jesus. The times uh, the appearance of the apostles are also good to see him and exit, okay, anxious to see that will happen next. We see that apostles do not know that it was not time yet that Jesus was returning to the store of the kingdom. They do not know that there was still be an entire church age, the age that we now live. But they want to know that it is um, when Jesus greatly reminded them that not only that it, it's not necessary for them to know, but that they need a st they had they still had some work to do before the next age. Acts one verse eight: The time and seasons in God's hands is just need to trust that He knows what is best. Okay, now here's Galatians 6, verse 7 and 10. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that man shall also reap. And he called, and for that soweth his flesh, and, and, the fle and so the flesh reap corruption. But he also soweth with the Spirit. And the Spirit reap life, and the seasons right, be everlasting. That is, so that is not worry. And we'll do any and redo season, and shall, we shall reap. And we faint not, as we therefore, opportunity as do good unto all men, especially unto them who are household of faith. Remember, in Acts the last year, chapter three, verse one: To everything that there's a season, we re we reap every what we reap what we sow, and we limit our time on this earth. We continually get encouraged to use like the time for good, to use the time to share the good news. That we know about our Savior Jesus to use the time to bring more on more into the kingdom. Let us not forget that telling people about Jesus and and what He did for them personally is not the end all. We must also use our time to minister, disciple those who already are brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus give us the energy and not to do everything. He gives us to do, keep on serving, and reward is out of this world. Okay, first Thessalonians 5, verse 1. But the time and seasons, brethren, you have no one at I write unto you. This is there from Paul to the church of Thessalonica. He reminds them to the Lord, and coming soon, he had finished encouraging them to the brothers and sisters they had died, come before them, reunited with them in the Lord returns. In chapter 5, he goes to thanks to the Lord, who will return us at the end of the night. Um, verse 7, only in chapter 5, verse 2, he was facing and telling them that he should be ready, always in his return. And we may know that his return is not necessary, because there's plenty of work to be done while they, while they waited. Okay, so what is the final thoughts about this? Well, now the final thoughts. God made a perfect plan. When he gave us time and seasons, he declared that the time and seasons should remain so long as the earth remain. Your time for the earth matters, and his timing is perfect. Be sure to watch the parts is planned for you. Time and seasons are, are in God's hands. Yeah, God's hands, not evolution. We just need to trust that he knows and what is best. Time is running out. 
Okay, and since you are still here on earth, that means you still you have some work to do. The Bible said we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter five, verse six to seven, verse sixteen to seventeen. Okay, and this, okay, so these verses about seasons on this on this article right here, and showing that seasons is in the Bible, show you that evolution is false and the Bible is true. Okay, I don't believe in evolution. I believe the Bible, okay, and the Bible is true, okay, and... I know God made the earth as a mature earth. And God made the universe as a mature universe and stars as mature stars. So, and there's no other way. It had to be made mature. Even though Em and Eve did have babies after, thereafter, and so is the animals. In the plants. So, so seasons came from God. Okay? And I'm going to keep believing that seasons came from God. Okay? And not evolution. Okay, here's my answer. Well, for um, okay, for evolution. Okay, the point of evolution is a damn souls to hell. Then go to heavens, believe all Lord Jesus. When you go to heavens, believe all Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is by faith alone and grace on Jesus Christ alone. And once they're saved, by easy believing when it's the truth. Okay. By um by meaning that you can't lose the salvation, and by easy belief that salvation is easy, we do just just believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. No. And that's it. And so I hope this video shows you that seasons prove the Bible and not evolution. Okay, evolution sends people to hell. Okay, it's the it's Jesus Christ that will send you to heaven. Okay, and I try to show you that. Now let me show you. you know, I want to show you the next video. Well, my next video will be called "What Does the Bible Say About Caves?" Well, I'll talk about that next video. Okay, because I gotta go right now, but. But thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.